What's up everyone, Dave here with another exciting tutorial and today I want to talk about Spotlight in ZBrush. Okay, let's dive right in. So if Lightbox is not open, go ahead and click on Lightbox and I'm going to grab this demo head right here. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of texture this guy using photographs with the aid of Spotlight. Okay, now what the heck am I talking about? Well, let's take a look here. So if I go up to texture and I'm going to be using textures quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of open this divider and if I have anything I'm just going to minimize it and I'm going to take texture and I'm going to go ahead and dock it over here. Awesome. Now um, I can see that this is actually, these are my spotlight buttons, but I'm going to go here to import a texture. So if I click on texture I can see that these are the textures that are currently in ZBrush, but I'm going to go ahead and import and you can see that I have some faces here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one right here and click open and now I can see that it's there and if I click on this I can click on this thing here to say add to spotlight okay now I can kind of come in here and I get this widget thing I'm gonna to go to the upper right hand corner and I can see scale and I can grab that and I can kind of like dial this either left or right and you can see that it changes the size then if I click I can move this around like that okay now the other thing too is if I grab this center circle here um, I can kind of, if I go over there, you can see it's going to uh, snap. It can snap if I get kind of close to a corner or a middle, it can snap or I can kind of set it anywhere. Now, why is that important? Well, I feel like if I scale this up or down, it's scaling it based off of where that manipulator is. So if I go here and scale it, you can see that that becomes kind of the pivot point of where it's um, growing out from. Okay, so that's just kind of some um, kind of etiquette, if you will. And here, you can see I can even click over here and I could, it's gonna kind of scale from that, okay? But that's just getting started. Like, what the heck is this all about? Well, let's actually um, grab some more images before we even get started here. So I'm gonna go over here to texture and I'm gonna go ahead and import the rest of these. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna hold down Control and click on these and click open. Okay. Now I have all of these added to Spotlight and I can see it's kind of weird here. So I'm gonna click on this icon right here, which is Tile Unified. And now I can see that I have all the images here. And by the way, this, um, this corner, this top thing right here, uh, that white bar, I'm gonna go here to Preferences, Thumbnail, and I'm just gonna turn that off. There we go. Okay, now great, I've got this. Um, and you can see this widget thing is kind of annoying. So I could press Z and now I'm out of that mode, but I'm also going to press shift Z and now it's like it's gone completely. So Z, um, shift Z, okay, and Z. Now, those are gonna be kind of the ways that I can kind of alter this mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this first image here. So I'm going to kind of hover over that and kind of pull this over, scale it up. And by the way, if you can't see like the mesh behind the image, um, you can see if I hover over this, it tells me what it is in the center. And I can see that like this is rotate, this is scale. Um, if I go over this, here's opacity. And how this works is kind of like a clock. Okay, so if I can see it, if I start here, it's going to be zero opacity and then as it goes around here it's going to get to 100 opacity so you can see that it's like at one o'clock right now and if i keep spinning this um whoa yeah there's opacity if i keep spinning this all the way to 12 o'clock it's going to get full opacity okay so it's kind of like that's how it's working so i could kind of have whatever opacity i want i don't want full opacity because i can't see my model and i also don't want low opacity because i can't really see my image so I'm going to kind of go about right there. And my goal right now is to kind of align this image to the model. Okay. And I can even rotate it like that. But I'm kind of, what I'm looking at is, are the eyes. Okay. I'm kind of aligning that. Now, again, if I wanted to get this out of the way, I could do that. And you can see that I can still kind of work this. And it's not going to be perfect because I feel like it's not like this head was modeled from this image. But let's say if I like that. Okay, I'm going to get out of Z-Add and I'm going to go to RGB and 
Now I'm just going to press Z. Okay. Now with Z, I'm still in spotlight, but what I'm able to do now is I'm able to color. So if I just go over the model, it's going to do like this. Okay. And then if I press shift Z, I'm out of it. Okay. And if I rotate, you can see, Hey, that's cool. But you'll notice that it's pretty pixelated right? It's not very high resolution. That's because I'm poly painting. And when I poly paint, um, it doesn't, it's only going to be able to support the detail depending on how many polygons it has. So if I look at this, I can see that, um, if I hover over this, I can see that this guy is, you know, uh, 68 or 57,000 polys. I'm just going to temporarily close this side. And I can see up here 57,000 polys. I'm going to divide them up to about 4 million. Okay, there he is, 3.6 million. That should be able to support a lot more detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. And the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm painting is I'm gonna turn off perspective. Now I don't have that perspective distortion. I think it'll be better to paint. So again, to get back to it, Shift Z. Now I'm back to this idea here. And I can even kind of go like this. So now I'm just kind of moving this around and I can see that there he is. And if I don't see the widget, that means that I'm in painting mode. So I can kind of paint now again and we'll just kind of go over this. And if I wanted to see if I got everything kind of, I could press Z again and I could take the opacity, bring this way down. I can kind of get a preview of what I'm dealing with. I'll kind of move this. Ah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now if I wanted if I wanted to commit to this, or not even necessarily commit, but just get out, shift Z. Aha, look at how much better that looks. Okay. Now of course the side is gonna be really jacked up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it from the side again, perspective distortion off. I'm going to shift Z. I'm going to Z, and then I'm going to go back to opacity. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit so I can see what's happening. I'm going to stack this again. So I'm going to say tile unified. Now I'm going to go to the side view here and I'm going to go ahead and pull that center stage, zoom up on this and again, kind of uh, position this. Now, again, it's not going to be perfect right away, but what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the, the hairline of the character. So I'm looking at like the sideburn and kind of where this goes up. Um, notice the ear is way off but I'm going to have to be okay with that for now. Also notice that the um, face, like the front of the face is way off. Okay. I'm okay with that because I already have the front of the face exactly how I want it. So I'm not worried about the front of the face. I, again, I'm only looking at the hairline. So when I'm satisfied with kind of that hairline placement, I'm going to go um, Z. Now I'm in paint mode and I can kind of paint this on. Again, I want to be careful that I don't paint over a good, you know, stuff that I have that's working. In other words, the front of the model, I'm going to only paint where I need stuff. Okay. And I can see that I'm going to have to rework the back. And now if I do shift Z, I can kind of see what I have. Okay. Now I kind of ruined the front there. I'm okay for now. Um, but let's look at the ear for a second. So I'm going to kind of align this like that. So I can see the ear kind of clearly. And um, I'm going to correct that. So again, Shift Z, and I'm gonna pull this ear up. So I'm gonna go Z, scale this up, position this. And again, I'm gonna kind of move this off to the side so I can kind of see. Okay, now I can see that the ear is pretty close to where I need it to be as far as how it is. However, you'll notice that the geometry is not uh, it doesn't fit the geometry exactly. So if I go to um, opacity, I can see that the geometry is different. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of nudge the ear image in place a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to click on nudge. And now I can go ahead and kind of nudge this image like this. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay. And I can kind of pull that into place. Now, what's interesting about this is I can actually hold down shift 
and kind of smooth that nudge back. And if I hit um, D, I can divide and get kind of a smoother nudge as well. So it's kind of like sculpting in ZBrush. Okay, there we go. And you can see how I'm kind of pushing this image to fit the model. So I obviously have to have low opacity. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Kind of pull that down. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And now when I'm ready, I'm gonna get out of nudge mode. Oh, and, and I should say this. When I'm on nudge mode, I can, um, if I bring this back, so if I do it basically back to 12 o'clock, you can see it's like I undid the nudge. But if I bring it this way, it, it's full nudge. Okay, so it's kind of crazy. It's kind of like an undo. I, obviously, I want it to be like that. Now, let's say if I'm happy with that, again, I can press Z. Now I'm out of the um, that mode. And now I can go like this. I'm gonna. It's gonna be painting it on there. Okay, and maybe I want to kind of correct this area. And you can see why I wasn't that concerned about um, the ear, like aligning the ear before, because I can kind of zoom up and correct it like this. And when I'm done, I can do Shift Z. And again, you can kind of start to see that I've got that working. Okay, because I had uh, mirroring turned on, it's doing both sides. And again, maybe I want to do like the back of the head now. So I'm just kind of doing this in chunks. And um, again, shift Z, Z, and then I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. And now I'm going to kind of rotate this and I'm only caring about the back of the head. So let's take a look here. So you, you obviously you might have to do this like four or five times. I, I'm sure you get kind of clever and maybe like try to warp the image to fit, but I think that that's probably gonna be more trouble than it's worth. Okay, I'm gonna hit Z. And now I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do this again. Just kind of keep painting. I'm, I'm probably gonna have obviously some correction areas, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of live with it. Okay, not you know, I, I want to be careful not to hit the ear right there. Okay, now if I hit Shift C again. Okay, I can see that I'm starting to make progress. Maybe I come back to the front here and I'm going to correct the, the forehead. Again, Shift Z. Z, I'm going to go back to Unified and I'm going to grab this one. Again, bring this one center stage, scale it up. Get this positioned. I can... Remember, if I grab that center, I can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. And now I'm only caring about that forehead, so I'm not caring about the eyes much. There we go. That looks pretty good. Z. And now I can paint this. And I'm going to be careful not to paint towards the edge because I already have the edge that's pretty good. Okay. Notice I have even the, the top view right here, so I'm probably going to use that as well. Z, Shift Z. And now you can kind of see, I can kind of rotate like this. And I try to rotate it to be at the angle that the, um, you know, that the image is at. And I feel like also what I might want to do is instead of this matte cap gray, be on like something like skin shade four, it's kind of like easier and cleaner to see. So I might kind of go more like at, at an angle like that. Shift Z, grab this one, whoop, um, Z, Go back like that, grab this one. Again, bring this center stage, scale it up. Scale it up. And um, if I Z, now I can still rotate this. You can see that sometimes it's easier to kind of align your model to the um, image. Uh, there we go, that looks good. Z, Z, there we go. Now I can paint this. Shift Z. And again, you can start to see. Maybe I'd want to turn off symmetry. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that you might find areas like um, here where you want to do some cleanup stuff. Well, let's not forget that we're poly painting. So what I can do is I can just press C as in color. And it's going to 
uh, select that color and now I can kind of paint with just the color okay now obviously if I just paint you know a solid peach it's gonna look cheesy but I feel like to do some correction areas like let's say if I hit his eyes um, and came in here to kind of do some corrective painting instead of like trying to do the projection I can just press C grab the color and then I can kind of go like that to kind of clean up that area same with up here I can kind of clean up that area um, and again the eyes are going to be covered most of it so I feel like I'm not worried about that so again hopefully this you know kind of is pointing you in the right direction for this idea of how to use spotlight um, for texturing and there's obviously other things that you could do in spotlight maybe I'll um, do another video on other things if you guys are interested but I think that if you haven't used spotlight before um, go ahead and kind of give it um, you know give it a look and, and see what you think let me know in the comments if you found this helpful and if you have any questions please let me know make sure to like and subscribe for more videos every week for tips and tricks on all th things 3d